Welcome to the 2024 Canadian Grand Prix Reaction. I'm Sagan, and once again, I'm joined by Captain AGX. Hello, hello, hello. Well, uh, we finally had a, had a Grand Prix uh, this year. Oh my uh, gosh, what a Grand Prix it was. Yeah, I felt what a Grand Prix. Grand Prix. It feels like every uh, we have had some good Grand Prix this year. They've just been very sporadic. Yep. You cannot really call what we had so far, like, for example, uh, Imola. You cannot call it a Grand Prix, a good Grand Prix, just yeah. because yeah, it was terrible. Lando almost <laughs> won, or Miami, for example, which, oh, obviously, Lando's first win by the race itself was, apart from Magnussen's uh, heroics, was pretty boring, let's say, like that. And, and yeah, this, this, this race was, like, the one that happens, like, once every two seasons, for example, like Germany 2019 or uh, um, what was it? Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot the other examples, but yeah, the, the one one in the two season Grand Prix, basically one of the 50 races. That's a that's the better word wording. Um, I think the only thing that this race didn't have was a unexpected winner. That's the one thing I, I think that it lacked because obviously yes. Max, we kind of get used to him winning, and if if it's like the, one of the best races we've seen in a while, and still Max wins, it kind of takes away from the from the excitement a little bit. Yeah, but definitely, definitely. definitely was not a not a boring race by any stretch of imagination. We had excitement for pretty much every single lap. Yep, yeah. um, I'm gonna start with practice. Obviously, uh, we had a lot of rain and kind of didn't have too much practice on Friday because of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> unfortunately, Jack Dewan, who was an Alpine for FP1, didn't get much running. I think he only did like one lap or one installation lap, basically just not, no practice session for him, which is unfortunate because uh, he, I'm pretty sure he wants that Alpine seat for next year. Um, yep, yeah, FP2 was a little bit more like, uh, I guess, uh, representative as we had more running. But still wasn't like we didn't we didn't, we didn't expect like Aston Martins and Mercedes in the top three at that point. But, but when we came to FP three on, on Saturday, we saw Mercedes being unexpectedly quick. I, I, I we we saw them being quick in practices for uh for a couple of, like uh quite the usual. It's it's quite the usual. Let's say like that, but. They carried to the qualifying, and I, I was very surprised because I didn't expect Mercedes to do as well as qual in qualifying as they did. And yeah, um, George Russell pole position, his second pole position in his Formula One career. What do you think? Yeah, it was, it was just incredible to see the fact that Mercedes managed to just pull out of the bag. I mean, they looked like the dominant force, and it felt like you know dominant F, uh, Mercedes F one once again. Which is crazy because they just haven't been like that. Uh, obviously, it was, it was the final qualifying. It was a lot closer. I mean, it was as close as you can <laughs> but, but again. Yeah. Um, but, but the fact Hamilton managed to not just put in any good laps in the, the two laps he did. I mean, everyone's first lap was way quicker than their second. But yeah. uh, Hamilton just couldn't put together the laps he managed to do uh, previously, which was a real shame. Um, otherwise, you know, it was it was just pretty incredible to see how everyone managed to well just deal with deal with the conditions, deal with uh, the fact the Sadies were just on top uh, the majority of that session. I mean, we had a lot of shocks. It yeah, it felt like. Yeah, like two years ago, when it was Mercedes and Red Bull on top. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had uh, McLaren there as well, which was yes, of course, of course, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, kind of <laughs> flashback to, the, uh, for example, twenty twenty one, where we had McLaren in the in the top three. Sometimes Lando just puts it randomly in the top three. So that's quite a couple of times, but this time it was super close, like. Yeah, pole position uh, gap was 0. 0.000, which yeah happened like once in the history before, and it was like with, between three drivers in like 1980s. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty rare. And to see Lando like t 
20 hundredths of a second, I think. So 0 0.02, like, or 0 0.02. Uh, it's, it was pr pretty much like less than half a tenth of a second, just extremely close. Piastri was one tenth of behind. Then we had, I think, Ricardo somehow yes. got that, um, I don't know what to call it, Toro Rosso, I guess, to P5, one and a half tenths of behind pole position. I, I, why does he just randomly put in a, a, a great like performance and then just drops off for the next five weekends? I I just don't understand. It's the Villeneuve effect. <laughs> yeah, it was a getting bullied, getting bullied, just made him. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I I I I see what Villeneuve means. I think we said similar, but. Um... I don't know. I, I also understand why Ricardo's in. He does pull off stuff like this. You know, you've seen it in Mexico before. You've seen it in... Uh, we've seen it this season already. Uh, granted, it was a sprint qualifying, but, you know, he is he's there. He can make sure... He can bring you a really good result every now and again. Um, and unfortunately, he couldn't do it in the race, you know, uh, circumstances beyond... Well, not beyond his control, but yes, yeah, yeah. stuff certainly got in the way. Uh, but yeah, it's still, you know, Danny Ricardo. he's still excellent and uh, thoroughly deserved a better result, to be honest. Yeah, I just feel like that it wasn't really possible in the, in the car. I think I had the pace to challenge the Astons. You know, even Stroll yeah. was, like, pretty, pretty decent for the entire weekend. Like, we, we saw last Stroll... Just somehow putting in the top three like every single session, it was it was interesting to see that Lance keeps his all uh, qualifying form at least uh, next to Fernando. Obviously, Fernando had like the first points finish since China, or or maybe yeah, Imola. He felt good this weekend. I was a bit worried he'd fallen off a bit. I can't lie. Uh, like maybe suddenly, suddenly, sometimes you find in football they just stop being able to play football and it's very sudden uh, and it doesn't even sometimes come down to injuries and I was like maybe this is legit me happened to Alonso but no he, he managed to pull through he's actually shown you know he's Alonso let's that's, yeah. that's, that's not beat around the bush here yeah. Um, so uh, yeah back, back in 5-4 yeah indeed uh, yeah. Uh, continuing with ball playing we have Lewis Hamilton P7 or uh, the Africa P6. Who is P6? Was it, was it Alonso, actually? It's probably Alonso. I think Hamilton was P6. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure Hamilton was P7. Or was it? Yeah. Was, wasn't he? I think it was uh, P7. Uh, I would need to reach out. It. it was either P6 or P7. It was just... He was the quickest driver, in my opinion, throughout the entire weekend, up until Q3, which happened... Quite a few times actually over the past few yeah, it was years. So then Hamilton. Yeah. So I, I have no idea what happens in Q3 with Lewis, but whenever he's extremely good in practices, even Q1, Q2, sometimes in Q3, just George Russell finds those couple of tens on him. I have no idea when it happens. Yeah, the entire often. field managed to find tips on him. As you yeah. say, he was the quickest going into it, and then yeah, suddenly a drop off of some kind. Yeah. No, um, fortunately, not even top five, even though I, qual uh, I put him qualifying in, in the P5, which was could be a good prediction if he did a, a bit better lap, but fortunately, he didn't. Um, finishing off with uh, Yuki Tsunoda, so double, double Q3 for Tara Russo with uh, the, no, the driver that got the two year deal at Red Bull being knocked down again. Yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. I, I'm not entirely unhopeful unho about this, though. I do think that it's the case of, okay, you've got to start performing now, or uh, Yuki's going to take your place. Maybe a, a corner down for uh, 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 Perez. Yeah. They could just swap him, I guess. It might be in the contract that, you know, if you, if you've got to, if you don't start performing, we're going to swap you. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it, it's... Maybe that's the case. I mean, it'd be it'd be a bit silly c considering his form for that to be the case for Paris. But you yeah. can back yourself. 
Yeah, I'm. I feel like they wanted to get Ricardo in that seat, but unfortunately, Yuki just became a god, and <laughs> Ricardo kind of fell off. So because of that, they just didn't know who to put in that Red Bull seat. Because as I alluded earlier, I don't think they ever considered Yuki for that seat after his first season. I think they're just keeping him there until they can basically get rid of him for for a good deal. I think Aston will take him for 2026 with Honda, obviously. So, so yeah, I think Yuki, even though he got another season, I think his time is pretty much set at, at that team. I don't think he, he will continue past 2025. And Ricardo, he's apparently, according to uh, Christian Horner, his seat is at threat. But if he keeps performing uh, in Canada, for example, I don't feel like that could be the case. He just needs to find a consistency. Mm. So. What's the, who's the young person that came in to replace him? Uh, replace whom? Ricardo when oh. he got injured last season. Oh, it was yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. Uh, Liam Lawson, we kind of forget about him. At least I yeah, they they've got to they got to think about him. Surely um, at this point. Yeah, I I would, I would be so glad to see him at the grid, but I really wanted to see him instead of Yuki. I wanted to see Yuki either go to Aston or Red Bull. Unfortunately, yeah. he didn't have any of those, so. Yeah, I, I don't feel like there's a seat for Liam unless Ricardo just the, just becomes like, you know, uh, in 2022, Ricardo once again and just never puts it in the Canada anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, uh, to finish up the qualifying, obviously we have some big shocks. Uh, the biggest, in my opinion, shock was double Ferrari out in Q2. Charles Leclerc P11, Sainz P12, after getting the double podium and winning the Monaco Grand Prix. Ferrari, that's 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 typical Ferrari that we know and love that just never, <laughs> never keeps the winning momentum that they get. They just always manage to screw up, even though they got a good, good management, good drivers, everything is better. Even pit stops are, are good, but they still, the strategy, Putting Charles on the march, that, that was the pure Ferrari boat. I was like, oh my god, this is 2022 also once again. And yeah, I... yeah, yeah, just absolutely Ferrari, as you say. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no better way to put it. So. Yeah, it's so Ferrari. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I saw an interview afterwards on Sky Sports with uh, Ferrari's team principal. I'm not going to attempt to say his name because I'll say it wrong. Um, and you know, they—they they, they just knew, you know, they have to do better than this. They absolutely have to. The fact that this keeps happening, stuff like this keeps occurring, is just. Uh, it, 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 they, they, they never win, you know. Yeah. And they, they had a huge opportunity to win this weekend, and they. Well, not maybe not this weekend. They did look slow. But, you know, this season they had a, whole, a huge opportunity to put maybe a bit more pressure on the Red Bull. And, and again, the Red Bull just looks like it's quicker and, and nothing's going to change. Yeah. Well, so upset about the... Not, not quite the, the, the driver Championship fight, because that was more of a... <laughs> more of a copium thing, but... Um... When it comes to the Constructors' Championship, I really thought that there could be a fight thanks to Red Bull re-signing Perez and obviously uh, him being there for this, this season anyway. Um, yeah, I I'm, I don't feel like that's that's quite the thing that they can challenge at the moment. I, I feel like they still need to... basically need to not have these kind of weekends where they're just not scoring points. They didn't start far off on points they started p11 and p12 both fell back at the start charles with the engine problems then those got fixed but then he put them the hearts and it was just yeah i feel like ferrari yeah. could have scored points today but they didn't and that was the that was the lack of damage limitations that they could have done in uh in the constructors championship especially because mclaren is now is now like right behind them red bull uh is now 25 points ahead 
like more 25 points more ahead because of the max for step and win. Thankfully for them, Checo is not scoring today. Uh, well, not yeah. today, uh, not on the Sunday because uh, that's just press things. Uh, we will obviously talk about him later on. And yeah, um, that's Ferrari. Um, next up uh, in Q2, I don't think there was any eliminations that were like, wow, that happened. Uh, no, no, no other ones. Let yeah. me say the both Alphas getting in is pretty shocking, yeah. but if both Ferraris are, then you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we had Q1, obviously, with I don't I don't think this is much of a shock anymore, <laughs> especially after last yeah. season. Checo Perez out in Q1 once again. Ah yeah, Perez. Perez. Oh, it's just yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like Ferrari, yeah, it just Explained by by saying the name and just yeah Perez. All right, um, another big shot in Q1 in my opinion. Nico Hulkenberg getting out qualified by Kevin Magnussen by quite a margin as well. I have no idea if he had any damage or issues with the car. I I don't know what happened because Hulkenberg is usually extremely good in the rain as well. It felt really weird that Magnussen was just quicker by such a such a big margin. It was it was strange. So, um, firstly, I have to mention him because you have him in the most pursuit drivers, so we'll talk about it later on. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In terms of the the other predictions, like the least and most impressive, I don't think you're scoring too many points there, but when it comes to the Grand Prix, I yes. think you're scoring a lot there. Uh, that's good. He's in. I mean, not, not a huge amount, let's just say, but oh, well, it's, fair. Decent, yeah. decent. Decent amount of points, yep. Yes. P1, always had the winner of the Grand Prix, Max Verstappen. He got that point for Max, and they're actually not like lucky, but it was a, it was not as straightforward when they're bringing Max Verstappen in for a win. Like this week, I had to fight for it. It was one of the better Max Verstappen drives that we saw. Um, as Max yeah, yeah. improved his brilliance. I mean, he did get lucky. Um... Yeah. But yeah, Lana got lucky in Miami, so it's, it was kind of uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah that's, that's what Max is. Um, uh, you know, that's what Red Bull said, and so on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I do think they did, I bet they did get lucky. Uh, they'll definitely be happy with what happened, but um, I mean. Yeah, the safety car just caught, called at the very worst possible time. Yeah, it was almost like Lando Norris as he's parking yeah, the pit lane. Yeah, as as the as the race went on and I watched it live, I was actually fuming that they purposefully uh, delayed the safety car start uh, the safety car deployment just until the land across the across the final chicane. Uh, when I saw the replay, yeah. it actually was like in the middle of the street and. It was like a 15 seconds after the car stop, I think, was large. Okay. So they had time to expect the safety car, but McLaren didn't. Lando didn't go to the pits himself. And yeah, McLaren, I feel like this is another instance of Sochi 2021 and McLaren just in, the, in these situations when you need to think quickly, they just don't really don't really have those things yeah, sorted yeah, out. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's um, Red Bull, on the other hand, is very good in the situations, and and Max got the win uh, thanks to the strategy. Obviously, got it into the pits was logical, but McLaren could have done so as well, and they didn't. So, yep, um, a thrown away win, kinda. But that was also for Mercedes. I think they could have won today, or if if for a better strategy, perhaps as well. Yep, um, P two. Another point for you, Lando Norris came like almost four seconds behind Max in the end. I think that was more of the Red Bull being strong in those conditions when it's full dry. I think, you know, the, the uh, arguing between the other teams definitely helped Max. Yeah. Uh, and he can just race away. I mean, that second, the first restart, I don't think it was that good for Max, especially because I think he's very, very good at restarts. So I'll, I'll give him that 100%. Yeah. I think he's superb at restarts. Second one I didn't think was as good, uh, but managed to still uh, get it in there, make sure it was safe, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah. Yep, you're right. E3 completing the podium and the first well real podium of the season for Mercedes. Uh George Russell in P3. Um very good weekend for him, but I feel like it's there's this feeling that it they it could have been more, especially when Mercedes yeah, exactly. plays this weekend. So kind of a missed opportunity, but still a, a great performance from George and from Mercedes as well, because Hamilton P4 with the fastest lap, I think, as well. So yeah, good good, good bunch of points for Mercedes after well, not a great start of the season where they were getting knocked out in, in Q2 pretty often. So yeah, uh, good job, Mercedes. Those upgrades worked, and hopefully they can keep them up there at least, uh, well, uh, hopefully uh, for, for longer as we get to Spanish Grand Prix which should not suit the Mercedes car, but we'll never know until we get there. Um, so yeah, no points there. P4 was Lewis Hamilton uh, from P7 to P4 with the fastest lap. I feel like that was a pretty decent drive, even though he himself said that he was it, it was one of his worst drives like in his career. I don't I don't quite believe that. I think he had many more worse weekends as a whole. Um, yeah, just if it, I think it feels like that he could have won today. Oh, sorry, today again. So that uh, on Sunday, but it just didn't happen because he didn't qualified so badly, and then in the race he was stuck behind Fernando for like one third of the race. Yeah, yeah. That, um, <laughs> uh, my brother is a huge Hamilton fan, um, and uh, yeah, it, he he was just fuming about the being stuck by Fernando just. <laughs> How much it was costing Hamilton time, um, but you know he was there for a reason. Uh, needed to get past him early, just couldn't, and uh, it affected his race massively. Yeah. I mean, it was in the wet, so but Fernando just seemed to have the con- this constant pace the entire time. It was uh, just him on his own, pretty much the entire race in the end. Yeah. But Fernando didn't. The Fernando wasn't slow himself like uh, the Astons were pretty decent in Canada they were right they were right but obviously they they were a lot slower than the other uh the top three cars this race I guess you could, we could say that yeah um okay P5 was Oscar Piastri my pole, pole sitter for, uh, in, in, in the predictions unfortunately didn't quite get the pole position he he was pretty close it was one tenth of a second the, the one one corner that could have decided that he could have gone pole, like if I think about it, I was pretty close, but still P4 and pole fine then. It feels, yeah, um, what could have been. But unfortunately, Piastri only finished the P4 and qualifying P5 in the race. So a, a decent race, but not the greatest for Piastri. Um, yeah, P5, no points for us. And that's uh, for top five, so we can go through a. Uh, interesting results from the Grand Prix um, yes. obviously Aston's double points double top seven finish good race from them in my opinion Aston uh, they really needed this weekend after the past few races especially where Fernando was not delivering so good good from a good job from Aston the P8 Daniel Ricardo a good weekend from him um, maybe could have been more but I feel like it was he did, he did what it could in that car, it was it was good. It, it was kind of screwed by strategy a little bit, but yeah, those things happen. It's very difficult to get things right, and he got four points for the team, which which are important points. So yeah, good job from him. And uh, yeah, two Alpines in the points in the end uh, with them uh, having a team order as well. I I, I don't quite know the the context, but feels like. Gasly was let through, uh, was was being let through uh, by Ocon, and then in the end he didn't concede the position, so Ocon was I angry. And from my knowledge, uh, yeah, Gasly was meant to be let through quicker, uh, and just wasn't because uh, Ocon thought he could, you know, fight fight for the position, uh, and yeah, that just just affected their race uh, again. Um, so, but in for Ocon, it's sort of like you're getting rid of me anyway. 
what's the point of me uh, just helping, basically, I guess. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's not... Well, he's required to because he's paid by them, but, you know, he, he certainly thought he could continue on, be quick in that car, uh, and uh, it proved, proved to be faultless. I, I think a lot of people said that he just let him overtake at the last second on purpose, uh, so he wouldn't get in enough trouble. You know, he's not getting in a dear amount of trouble about it. Yeah. Oh, well, the, that's Alpine. Yeah. <laughs> it's Alpine. Yeah, that is it's Alpine. Alpine indeed. It's, it's Alpine. <laughs> yeah, I can say this for a lot, for a lot of teams and drivers. Um, yeah. uh, the, that was the last points finishers. So obviously, Yuki Sinada wasn't the points, but um, had the, well, uh, a very, very close, almost uh, very dangerous uh, shun that could call it like that obviously Nico Honkerberg came by missing Yuki's car by like a millimeter it was extremely close and Yuki actually missed the wall by such a small margin as well it was extremely lucky that Yuki's car wasn't destroyed like straight up destroyed by either the wall or upcoming car not a greatest yeah. not a greatest weekend from Yuki it's like anyway so yeah I just yeah uh, the crash in the end was not the greatest thing we could have done but at least it wasn't like destroyed the car wasn't destroyed so no cost cap damage from them uh, they can move on with four points from ricardo so that's, that's for them uh just outside mm -hmm. the points has this and I, I, I want to talk about has because at the start it, they're extremely quick on the wets but then their strategy is was not the greatest so yeah, has unfortunately not getting points. Uh, wanted to say something? Yeah, I was going to give a big shout out to uh, Hans Albon. Oh, yeah, uh, Albon. I think he, he deserves a yeah, shout out this race. Uh, I mean, he was sensational, wasn't he? Yeah, I, I kind of forgot uh, about him because of DNF, but that overtake. Yeah. That double overtake that, was oh. wow. That was. <laughs> that was That's like. Overtake of the season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it probably will end up being overtaken the season overall, but it definitely is current overtaken the season. He was just superb in that move. I mean, as you say, wow. Yeah. Um, I, I, I run out of superlatives for just how incredible that move was. It yeah. was just sensational. And uh, it really proves that, you know, as much as he doesn't get maybe as many points as you'd want, uh, he is an a Williams. He can still do stuff. And in the wet, he is really, really good. I think um, back to when he qualified, was it third? Oh, no, it was George Russell. Sorry, my, my bad. <laughs> um, but that, uh, that Williams is definitely, you know, got something under it. Uh, when it turns wet, I think it's it's been it's it's done a few races now where I've been surprised at how good it's been. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Alex is on a run, a pretty good run of form. Unfortunately, this race didn't end up quite what he would have hoped for, hoped for as he DNF'd, obviously. Uh, not his fault. Not his fault. <laughs> but it was it was like how unlucky can you get? Like that situation, he couldn't couldn't have done anything differently at that point because he left as much space as he could have for signs, but it was just yeah. It he was, did a big, big dodge. Yeah. I mean, it was a huge dodge, yeah. and yet still somehow, yeah, <laughs> still was... somehow he managed the rollback of yeah. it. Literally looks like signs put his car in reverse to make sure he hits him. Um, but uh, you know that's 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 what we're talking about yeah. here. That's how big like yeah. the change it suddenly jolted out. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just disappointing for them, especially because uh, they look good all weekend, um, and I think he could have got some points, but uh, it's unfortunately not going to end up being the case. Um, 
and they'll definitely be, you know, they they definitely rule that because uh, they've been they've been quite good recently, uh, especially Albon. Yeah, just Albon. I don't I don't really feel like Sargent was exceptional this yeah, yeah. In, this, in this weekend. He he got into Q Q two, I think, which is well good from from Sargent, but that was that was about it. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So yeah, um, did we miss anyone? Uh, for the finishers, obviously, we don't really have to talk about the Saubers as well. They they not not really worth to talk about. You kind of, as you said in the ranking video, you kind of forget that they they, they exist. So. And once again, I did this right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously we had I think Yuki finishing the uh, in P fourteen between them, and obviously Joe being the the last finisher, the only car who got lapped as well, which is an interesting. Thing that we have to it. mention <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah for, uh, for that reason yeah and we have five dnfs obviously uh with double ferrari dnf double williams dnf and checo uh, perez with uh, another performance uh, deserving of a two-year deal uh, a two-year deal at the best team mm-hmm. <laughs> okay no, um, yes yes indeed okay fastest lab was lewis right uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah, okay, so I can... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can check. Uh, both slaps. Yes, Lewis and then George. All right. Least impressive team. Uh, it was literally, by the way, I should say, a tenth of a second, both on the same lap. Oh, okay. Uh, it was, yes, yeah, both lap 70. Both yeah. one, so Lewis was a one... Uh, sorry, that's his time of the day. Uh, oh no, this was way quicker, didn't I? My bad. Okay. Okay. Well, um, back to the point. Least impressive team. I think there's no points points for us because that's. I think there's only one team who perfectly qualifies for this uh, for this uh, <laughs> category. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, I agree. We're All right. Uh, it's absolutely, one team. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Moving on. Uh, least impressive driver. Um, I'm gonna. It's it's uh, it's difficult, right? Because he's done it again and again and again this season. But I have to say Perez again. Yeah. It, it's almost like you cannot get lower. But then, like, but this <laughs> race was just utterly insane because he did not overtake anyone. <laughs> Like, I do not remember him being this. There was one point where I went, oh, Perez is in this race. And look, there's a big shout for Science. I'll give you that, because Science doesn't just wipe himself out. He wipes someone else out. But it has to be Perez. And then, you know, beyond that, sorry, my bad, his car, he, he breaks his own car, and then just tries to get to the pit lane desperately, basically trying to make sure there isn't a yellow a yellow flag or a safety car, only for there then to be a safety car right afterwards, thanks to the Albon science crash. And, you know, he's got so much data. The fine, I don't think, was enough, because I know for a fact Red Bull were desperately trying to get him back. Um, so, yeah, that fine is just not enough. And... It's just ludicrous. It's ludicrous that that, that took place. Um, yeah. I just can't believe it. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't believe that happened. Yeah, I think we shared exactly the same thoughts. Uh, pretty much summed up, summed it up uh, perfectly. Um, yeah, and just, well, uh, Red Bull broke the rules on purpose, but yeah, it's just. They'll get away with it. Yeah, they got away with it with the fine and the penalty, uh, the grid drop, which uh, I mean for Spanish Grand Prix probably puts Perez from P seventeen to P twenty. So <laughs> such a penalty! <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, the fine was not even that big for for a team that's winning constructor championship uh, championships. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, or worthless penalty for the team for well. I think Will Baxton summed it up very 
well, but then he deleted his tweet. Uh, he was like comparing it to Singapore 2008. Uh, it was it was very interesting to see the perspective. Uh, but uh, yeah, it can really. Uh, I I feel like it should have been like more more of a bigger penalty. But again, it's I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a steward. I, I have no idea what actually the rules say in the rule book. So. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, when it comes to the mildly impressive driver, I actually wouldn't put signs. I, I kind of forgot about them because they were so forgettable in this race. But yeah, um, my pick would be Guan Cho, actually, because uh, he crashed like three times during the weekend and finished the only car finished lap behind. That's the important thing that. Uh, there was a car finishing lap behind. It's uh, important to mention. <laughs> yeah, um, it is important to mention, isn't it? He keep being <laughs> keeps being destroyed by Bottas every single session, and uh, yeah, there was a, there was a no no glimpse of hope for the entire weekend from Joe. I just feel like it was like it was like the Latifi, yeah, yeah. Latifi twenty twenty Hungary who like spun like six times during the race, like. That kind of weekend uh, that I felt like from him. So, yeah. We, yeah, paid drivers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah paid drivers. Being paid drivers, yeah. We have Sargent, mm. we have Joe, we have Perez, uh, we have, well, Ferrari. So. <laughs> uh, all the if, uh, Perez isn't a paid driver, he just brings so much money to Red Bull. <laughs> well, uh, it's kind of a paid driver, isn't he? Like, he, yes, he, true, he has true. his seat. He's a fan driver, I he, guess. He has a seat. Only thanks to the the profit that Red Bull makes from him. Like I think, feel like the the profit that Perez brings to the team is enough for Max Verstappen's salary and still turns a profit. So it kind of good for the team, I would say. But still, the results aren't great. And if they lose the constructors' championship because of Perez, I, I don't feel like that's worth it, even for the money and for the merchandise merchandise sales. I think they would have been better off. With Yuki or even with Daniel, I I don't feel like there's a much much of a difference between Ricardo and Perez at the moment. I feel I feel like they're both equally mid, so, so yeah, I, I, it just doesn't make sense to keep Perez. But we we talked about this a, a couple of times already, and yeah. Um. So I guess we neither of us could get a point because obviously Ricardo had a good weekend of signs. Didn't have a good weekend. He crashed in, in the race and qualified twelve B twelve. But Ferrari, I think Ferrari being trash was more of the factor in this in this case. So yeah, um, I would yeah. say no points. Uh, most impressive team. I, I would say both of us don't don't get a point here. Uh, no. So yeah, that's that's pretty easy. Um, Who would you give it to? I- Mercedes. Yeah, that, definitely yeah. Mercedes. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's a difficult one. Uh, what, what, what would what uh, ask them? Uh, no, it, it does go to them. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I did just expect Aston to do first week. <laughs> I think the fact that Mercedes, you know, across the weekend, you'd say it's Mercedes. Yeah, I mean, Mercedes went from a team that was like. Fighting with Hasses to a team that's fighting with Red Bull for the win, or even maybe McLaren. So I would say that they impressed me the most this weekend, and that's why I would give them the point. If anyone obviously would vote for Mercedes, but we're not used to picking them, obviously. So yes, um, most impressive driver though that would be uh, well. There are a couple of picks that we could pick. I I would either go for Max or George, in my opinion. Or maybe even Ricardo, because you don't expect Ricardo to be that good during the weekend. But, yeah, it, yeah, I, yeah I guess I would go for Ricardo, but anyway, we got... And you could get to race at probably give Hamilton. Um, uh, this is the... This is the through positions, but for, for this, the weekend, I would definitely think give a sway more towards George or Ricardo. Oh uh, yeah, I I don't feel like even the race was uh, like I don't feel like the race was good for Hamilton himself. I mean, he say he says that, but he, I I just think um, there's some aspect of it where uh, 
you know, going from fourth, could have got third. Uh, let's be honest, they could have kept fighting. Um, it's, it's quite quite a successful weekend for Hamilton, especially because he, he kind of got stiffed with the hard tyres at the end as well. Uh, but then I guess that's a team decision rather than anything else. Ah, that's that strategy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but you know, it's because he was he'd already used his okay. mediums. Uh, who would you give it to, like the driver for the weekend overall? I'm going to say Ricardo. Okay, so we are on the same boat then. As uh, yeah. yeah, it's relatively to relative to our expectations, I would say Ricardo performed the best. It's we we expect Max and Lando. Even George, I, I felt like George would have a good weekend because obviously I, I put in the fastest lap. I put Mercedes in the peak five. So I expected Mercedes to be good, but not this good. But there was more more to Mercedes being good that, than George being exceptional because obviously Lewis was very close in qualifying up until Q3, where obviously the, the tires were not up to temperature for Hamilton uh, somehow. Uh, <laughs> What goes in, in in those Mercedes garages with the tire blankets? I, I have no idea, but yeah, no. Okay, Ricardo, it is. Extra world prediction. Um, World of Champions, the red flag was not the case. Unfortunately, even though Albon was, could have stopped on track in the practice, he touched the wall, but he got back to the pits and unfortunately lost me a point there. But yeah, uh, luckily for me, you got, you got only two points from this weekend because that was a car lap. Guan Yu Zhou, thank you so much. <laughs> I hate him, I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Very this cool. this also means that it's, I think this is the first time you take the lead it, since like the middle of it the is. last season. Yes, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's been a long time. I mean, I, I left last season until uh, almost the very end. Um, yeah. You were in, you were in the fight up until the last race. Incredible overtake, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the, this is the, the the biggest, shall we say? Yeah. Uh, looking at my points, yeah, I got three points in the last three weekends. That's uh, not the greatest look for me, but hopefully I can bounce I mean, back. I'm not getting much better, to be fair. Yeah, but you're not getting zero points from a weekend. That's I I don't think that happened like ever. Or maybe it did, but it's very rare to see a zero. Yeah, but no, it might have. <laughs> but I was an expert, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh. Not for us, dude. <laughs> Sorry, Banana, if you're if you're listening. <laughs> Miss you. Yeah, we would like to have you back. Unfortunately, you you're too busy to be here. But yeah, we 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 miss you, man. And hopefully, you can you can rejoin sometime in the future. But anyways, we we are we're we're over. We're done. Uh, the predictions with the reaction. Uh, it was a, it was the best race of the season, as we both, I think, expressed that. Um, yeah, and yeah, uh, hopefully, I can we can keep this up because it looks like we're on for a for a pretty interesting season. Even though at least one of the championships is pretty much sealed, because I don't feel like even if the Red Bull becomes the third fastest car, it's difficult to beat Max, as we saw in the previous four races well ever since miami it was red bull not being the clearly the fastest car so yeah we saw max being max and i don't feel like anyone can challenge max uh, as long as max has a car that can get at least a podium so yeah um hopefully for exciting spanish grand prix and we'll see you next time so thank you everyone who's been watching this video uh, and I'm not going to do the long intro anymore. Uh, see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Did you forget again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still recording. I'm so chillaxed. I'm so chillaxed. All right. All right. Do you want to say it?